the incredible San Rafael Rainforest, part of a once vast Atlantic rainforest biome that stretched across four South American countries, Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, and Uruguay. Overall, this biome supports some 20,000 plant species, of which 40% are found nowhere else on Earth. Nearly 1,000 types of birds are also found here, including numerous endemic species and many that are critically endangered. 93% of this forest is already lost, and the remainder is under great pressure. The forests of San Rafael are now the world's most critically threatened biodiversity hotspots, mostly due in part to farming and the higher monetary value of the land for farms rather than forests. Just as the forests around Paraguay are being cut down for alternative, more profitable uses of their land, forests around the world are also having the same problem in the land. Before long, without some kind of intervention, problems will occur with our natural species and Earth itself. The main goals of this forest conservation project is to help improve the farming systems and efficiencies of community members so they do not have to rely on the deforestation. Given that these local communities' welfare is compromised with inherently low incomes, the incentive to clear additional forests is extremely strong, but people are slowly realizing that the forest will soon be gone if something is not done. Thankfully though, our beautiful black-billed magpie, or Pika Hudsonia, isn't affected much through this deforestation. The black-billed magpie, which we frequently see here in the Rocky Mountains and Steamboat Springs, is a bird of the crow family of them inhibits the western half of North America. It's noted for its dome nests and being one of only four North American songbirds whose tail makes up more than half of its total body length. The adult black-billed magpie can grow up to 18 to 24 inches long and can weigh from 5 to 8 ounces. Males are generally about 10% larger and about 20% heavier than females. The tail is long and makes up half the bird's lengths, while the wingspan is about the length of the bird itself. The black-billed magpie is black with white shoulders, a white belly, and iridescent dark blue-green wings and tail. There are large white markings on the primaries, clearly visible in flight, while the feet and bill are completely black. These magpies range in the north from coastal Alaska, British Columbia, all the way down to the Rocky Mountains, south to Colorado, Wyoming, and Idaho. The range extends as far east as Minnesota and Iowa, but is thought to be limited through the high temperatures and humidity. These magpies tend to frequently stay in open country with scattered trees and groves. Though they can obviously be found in cities, especially steamboat, We can tell these magpies are very opportunistic omnivores, eating anything from the trash to our food on the table and seeds and insects on the ground. The chicks are fed almost exclusively animal matter from their parents. Oftentimes you'll see them foraging on the ground, usually walking and hopping and scratching their feet to turn over ground litter. A lot of times they land on large mammals such as moose or cattle to pick up the ticks and bugs that often plague these animals. The adult black-billed magpie pairs typically stay together year-round and often for life. Their breeding season is generally from late March to early July, and they'll nest once a year but may re-nest if their first attempt fails early. The females lay up to 13 eggs, but the clutch size is usually only 6 or 7. Only the female will be involved in the incubation period for about 3 weeks. Then, about three to four weeks after hatching, fed with adults for about two months, they will fly off to join the other juvenile magpies. Black-billed magpies breed for the first time at the age of one to two years old. While the lifespan of the species in the wild is about four to six years, the lifespan of the species in captivity is about 10 to 12 years. Being very similar to American crows, Magpies tend to roost communally in the wintertime. Every evening they'll fly, often in groups and sometimes over long distances, to reach safe roosting sites such as dense trees or shrubs that impede predator movement. 
or at higher latitudes, dense conifers that afford good wind protection. At their roosting sites, they tend to stay solo and occupy trees singly. All in all, the pica and sonia may be of a great annoyance to us all, but it's vital to nature and our species itself through the controlling of the bugs and insects around us all. And just like the rainforests, we must keep a close eye on the world that surrounds us all.